So did the Prophet Muhammad ever kill anyone? Yes or no? Yes. On meditation. Hey guys, as you can see, I have all these journals. The link will be in the description. Hello guys, this is Han. Hi, I'm Kelly. And we are Han Meditations. Meditation. I did that a little different this time. I don't know what's going on with me. I don't know what's gotten into me, guys. I wasn't even ready out, but we winged it. Yeah, <laughs> this is a live kind of video. So we do all of our videos live. We don't really edit them. Sometimes if we feel like something is taking too long, we'll go ahead and snip it and edit it just to make it a little shorter. But you know, we usually do this straight live so you guys can see exactly how we are. So we have an interesting topic today. We want to learn more about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So let's go ahead and learn more about his life because, you know, a lot of people, they need to hear this information. They need to know this. And that's why we're doing this, because it gives people an outlet so that they can search, so that they can learn, so that they can do their own research, so that they can go on the path of Islam, whether they want to go on that path or not. It's totally up to them you know it's everyone has free will you guys can choose but we want to learn more so and that's why we're doing these kind of videos so let me go ahead and ask this question hello chat gpt i want you to answer me this question was the prophet muhammad a violent man The question of whether the Prophet Muhammad was a violent man is a complex and often debated topic. In Islamic tradition, Muhammad is generally portrayed as a prophet and leader who preached peace, compassion, and justice. Many Muslims view him as a model of moral character, emphasizing his compassion, honesty, and dedication to social justice. However, like many historical figures, Muhammad's life included conflict. He faced significant opposition in Mecca, which led to his migration to Medina. There were battles, such as the Battle of Badr and the Battle of Uhud, where he led his followers in defense against those who sought to harm them. These events are often cited by critics as evidence of violence. It's important to consider the historical context. Many of the conflicts during Muhammad's life occurred during a time of tribal warfare and social upheaval in the Arabian Peninsula. Supporters argue that his actions should be viewed within that context, emphasizing that he aimed to establish peace and justice. Ultimately, interpretations of Muhammad's actions vary widely based on perspective, cultural context, and religious beliefs. Some see him as a warrior leader necessary for his time, while others focus on his teachings of compassion and peace. How do you view this topic? So did the Prophet Muhammad ever kill anyone? Yes or no? Yes. The Prophet Muhammad was involved in battles during his lifetime, and it is recorded that he participated in conflicts where individuals were killed. However, the context of these events is often discussed in terms of self-defense and the socio-political environment of his time. How did he act after killing someone? After conflicts in which individuals were killed, historical accounts suggest that the Prophet Muhammad often emphasized the importance of justice, mercy, and forgiveness. He reportedly expressed regret for loss of life and encouraged his followers to treat captives with kindness. For example, after the Battle of Badr, he showed compassion towards prisoners of war, allowing many to be ransomed or released rather than executed. He emphasized the value of peace and reconciliation whenever possible, often seeking to resolve conflicts without further violence. These actions align with his teachings about compassion and justice, which are central themes in Islam. Would you like to know more about specific incidents or teachings? Yes, these conflicts you mentioned, can you please elaborate on the conflicts that were outside of war that happened, that had a result in killing? Certainly. There are a few notable incidents involving the Prophet Muhammad that occurred outside of formal battles, but still resulted in killing. Here are a couple of examples. One, the incident of the Banu Qurayza. After the Battle of the Trench, the Jewish tribe of Banu Qurayza was accused of betraying the Muslim community by siding with the Meccan forces. After the siege of their fortress, they surrendered. The tribe's men were judged by Saisad ibn Mu'adh, a former ally, 
who ruled that the men should be executed while women and children were taken captive. Muhammad accepted this judgment, which has been a topic of much discussion and debate in terms of its moral and historical context. Two, the execution of poets. Some individuals were executed for inciting violence against Muhammad through their poetry. For example, the poet Kab ibn al-Ashraf was killed after he allegedly insulted Muhammad and sought to undermine the Muslim community. Muhammad reportedly sanctioned this execution as a means of dealing with threats to the community. These incidents are often analyzed within the context of the social and political climate of the time, which involved tribal warfare, betrayal, and survival. Critics and supporters of Muhammad interpret these events differently, with some viewing them as pragmatic decisions necessary for the safety of the Muslim community, the Muslim community, while others question the morality of the actions taken. Would you like more information on any specific incident or context? Yes, I'd like to know just a little bit more about the sanction of the killing of the poet. Tell me why that was necessary to happen. The execution of Kaab ibn al-Ashraf is often cited as an example of how Muhammad dealt with individuals who posed a significant threat to the Muslim community. Kaab was a poet from the Jewish tribe of Banu Nadir and was known for using his poetry to incite hostility against Muhammad and the Muslims, particularly after the Muslims had faced setbacks in battles. Muhammad and his followers viewed Kaab's actions as harmful, not just because of the content of his poetry, but also because it encouraged opposition and unrest among tribes that were already hostile to the Muslims. In a time when the community was vulnerable, these provocations could lead to violence and destabilization. The rationale for sanctioning Cobb's killing was largely based on the perception that his continued presence and influence could incite further conflict and undermine the safety of the Muslim community. Therefore, some scholars argue that Muhammad viewed this act as a means of protecting the nascent Muslim society from potential threats. While this incident has been interpreted in various ways, supporters of Muhammad's actions argue that they were necessary for the survival and cohesion of the early Muslim community during a tumultuous period. Critics often highlight the moral implications of such actions, leading to ongoing discussions about ethics in times of conflict. Does this give you a clearer understanding of the situation? Yes, it does. So mm. that's interesting because you have to think about it this way. In the context of the time over a thousand years ago, that was a completely different time. Yes. So I don't know what the situation was, but from what ChatGPT itself just told me, was that Muhammad, the prophet, peace be upon him, was a, basically was like a just and kind man. And he didn't want to kill. He didn't revel in killing. He wasn't someone that was just, you know, sociopathic in nature that wanted to kill. He was just someone that did whatever he had to do and had to make hard choices. And this was a long time ago. So, for instance, I don't know the full specificities of what happened in here in the story. But for instance, if someone is inciting violence upon people and saying, hey, this is going to happen, da, 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 da. And they're just going crazy and going crazy. Maybe other Muslim children were getting kidnapped and murdered. I don't know. I really don't know. This is just speculation that I'm saying. Maybe this guy was inciting violence upon other people to the point where they had to do it or they felt like they needed to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think you should justify murder, but this is a different time. You can't use today's standards for yesterday. No. That's presentism. That's that's flawed logic. You can't use today's standards for a different time. So that's an interesting video, and I really like that. And I want to expand even more upon that video because, like yeah. I said, we never know where these videos are going to lead us. So just thinking about it, I'm already thinking of more things to ask and learn about. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, absolutely right. It was a totally different world. The world was more violent and the world was more tribal. 
you know, so it, it, we can't think of it in, in context of today's because it was different. But it, either way, even outside of battle, it sounds like really these were political government type decisions and weren't even necessarily like his personal decision, but more so the political powers, et cetera. And that's how they all were. And, you know, what we didn't hear one where he's like, oh, he just got mad at somebody and he just, you know, killed him right then and there or whatever. These were, you know, very political things, political moves and really hard decisions, I'm sure, as well. So Yeah, and I'm sure there's other prophets out there in Christianity, Judaism. I, I guarantee you there's <laughs> other prophets and people out there that were killing people, you know. Even the story of David versus Goliath, he was murdering people. You know, he murdered them. Typically, leaders so have to make hard decisions. You have like to do this. things like that. So we're going to learn even more about that kind of stuff. But wow, what an interesting video! I I like this topic a lot. So thank you guys for watching the video. Thank you for liking and subscribing. We love every single one of you guys. Just you being here is enough. Thank you to the people that donate to the channel. You're really helping keep the channel going. We see every message. That's the easiest way to contact us, whether it's $1, $100, one cent. It doesn't matter. Thank you guys so much. We love you so much, and we need you more than you realize. We'll see, see you, you in the, the next, next video. video.